The Nigerian Senate has said that it would reduce the number of political parties participating in elections in the country from 91 to 5. And the Minister of Police Affairs has said that 10,000 constables will be recruited yearly into the Nigerian police force. This is PLOS Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. The Nigerian Senate has said that it would reduce the number of political parties participating in elections in the country from the current 91 to 5 through legislation. It expressed dissatisfaction over the huge number of political parties fielding candidates in the forthcoming governorship elections in Kogi and Bielsa states. Will this step positively or negatively affect the political scene in Nigeria? Joining me to discuss this are two gentlemen, Dikbo Olayoku, who is a journalist. Thank you very much for coming. Yes, always a pleasure. Good evening, yes. And of course, we have Biodu Shoumi, political analyst. Thank you very much for coming. I'm pleased to be here. Good evening. Gentlemen, let me start with you. What are your thoughts? Will anything come of this talk? You mean by the National, National Assembly? Yes. Yes, ordinarily, especially arising from the last general elections. Very many Nigerians have the feelings that there's a need for us to regulate the number of political parties. And um, especially when you had the ballot paper that looked like uh, an almanac. And then we, even if you still get to our next table today, I am aware that uh, there are other political associations Over 100. Yes, that have applied for registration to become political parties. We have to look at it from the point of law. If you look at uh, the Nigerian Constitution, now as amended, especially from section 221 to 227A7, <clears throat> that has to do with political parties and the regulation, regulatory power is given to INEC. There are only two instances when a, a National Assembly will have anything to say about political parties. It's only when National Assembly is submitting the reports of the accounts and balance sheet of political parties. Now, if I next says they want to go through legislation, uh, sorry, NAS, it means they have to amend the constitution. And the amendment of the constitution will be so fundamental that it's going to remove certain powers. We should not forget, well, how did we arrive at this 91, or um, as the case might be, maybe one of political parties. The INEC then, because of what the National Assembly did on when uh, Dimitri Bankole was the speaker and that uh, they wanted to regulate the number of political parties. On the basis of that, I neck the registered political parties and Chief Kanifa Wim went to court. And the court said no. If there are conditions laid down and they have met these conditions, there's nothing that says you should not register or register. So it's like uh, the, the legislation that uh, the NAS wants to do might include removing some powers from the courts that have ruled on this matter. We are not looking, we are not saying that we don't need to regulate. I, I think what we should be doing is, nobody is stopping anybody from participating in political parties, and uh, uh, registering political parties. Maybe what we need to do is at the point of elections. But isn't, isn't, it, isn't it too much? Because at, we have 91 political parties, and a lot of persons said the ballot paper looked, you said it yourself now, that it looked like something like else. So isn't it, uh, isn't it something that we should encourage? Let me take that question to you, sir. Is, it, is this move, is it not something or a move that should be explored, considering what we witnessed in the last elections? Well, um, <clears throat> the issue is very clear. Like um, Dipo said, the law and desirability, I would add desirability. Nigeria is made up of over 356, according to some experts, distinctive ethnic okay. nations. You have over 250 languages within it. There is no way how we will end up trying to aggregate in a country like Nigeria, you know, the interest disparate interest of these disparate ethnic nations into five political parties. And therefore, I think INEC should not even think about that or National Assembly. In the first instance, you need to consider one thing, India. India has over 100 registered political parties. The registration of political parties is not the problem. 
The problem is cost of governance. That is what we should be talking about. We've all been talking about the need to reduce the cost of governance in Nigeria. And that includes the process where, you know, those who are governing the country emerge, you know, from, which is, you know, the electoral process. So but if you cost focus... cost is an issue when it comes to the number of political parties, of isn't it? Of course, cost is an issue uh, because we cannot stop choices. You cannot abrogate it. And you cannot abrogate one very important aspect of the constitution, which is the right and freedom to association. association. It's a fundamental human right. This is where National Assembly will end up running into a problem. And do not forget that whether they intend to do it through an act of parliament or not, the constitution is very clear. Any act of parliament that violates the spirit and letters of the constitution of Nigeria is invalid. That means that the, 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 the former Deputy Party. Senate President Ike Kuremadu was saying that the, the, the parties as constituted now contravenes the Electoral Act. Why INEC is saying that the parties are arguing that the Electoral Act is inferior so the to the Constitution. Be, yes. I, I need us to explain this uh, to the person who is watching and don't quite understand why an, an Act of Parliament will contravene the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Okay. Under the current Electoral Act, any political party that fails to win a post, win an office, stands deregistered. Should be deregistered by INEC. That is what the electorate is saying, the current one. But under the Constitution of Nigeria, you have the right to associate, right to assemble. And the court has affirmed that in the case cited, which Ghanifai me went to court, uh, up to Supreme Court, you know, uh, to say that, yes, Nigerians have the right. You cannot deregister them. So where does Conditions, it? where you have a problem is this. There are conditions in the electoral heart. Don't forget, when Ghani went to court, it includes you must have offices in all the states right, of the federation. Yes. Now, the Supreme Court said, no, that is not in the Constitution. Is, those are extra requirements imposed by Act of Parliament, which are inconsistent with the spirit and letters of the Constitution of the Federal Republic. So where does this leave us? Let me come to you. Where does this leave us if is, we have an electoral act that seems to contravene the Constitution and we have the situation? It is still a conspiracy of people in government. When this issue of to the, with the electoral act that we are talking about came into being, it was to shrink the political space so that only people in government will have their parties up and running. Don't forget, in the original constitution of Nigeria that we are talking about, there is even provision for subvention of political parties. Yes. They removed it when they were making the Electoral Act and then the aspect of the law. Like Kebiodo said, the law is very clear. That is what the constitution says. And it's the broad norm. Every other law derives its power or its existence from the constitution. And the Constitution in section is one of the that any law that is contravention of constitution is to the extent of its inconsistency null and void. So the point they are trying to make is, yes, we appreciate the fact that in the last election there, there, there wasn't the need for all the political parties to be on the ballot paper. Nobody will question that with them. But on the basis of association, the question is very clear. You can form associations. We are hearing of uh, Democrats and Republicans for, for today, today in America. Doesn't mean that, that doesn't, it doesn't mean that is the only political parties we have in America. The same thing ditto in Britain. We have the conservative, we have the labor. There are, there are tens of other political parties that are existing. So many. So many. Socialist, socialist so Green many Party, them. a lot of. But because we are hearing Democrat, Republican does not mean. So what we are saying is, is that let us allow the political parties to fester. Maybe what you can do is, okay, you can give conditions that, okay, before you can belong or take part in an election, these are the things you must do. But you just Don't cited an instance of people going to court to say these parties have a right to be part of the process. And you, from the last election, election you saw how the ballot uh, the, the constitution was. only spoke about conditions for registration. It didn't talk about constitution for, for consider conditions for taking part in the okay, elections. The, the Senate is still the body that makes laws in this country. And they are saying that a committee is already working um, to see how they can get a legislation that will help with the process of reducing. They, they are very specific. They said they want to reduce the number of political parties to five from 91. So what options are open for them to explore? In the first instance, the Senate itself is the creation of the Constitution of the Federal Republic, the same Constitution which they seek either to abridge or to extend. The problem the Senate has is this. 
they need to review the constitution of Nigeria. An attempt to review the constitution, even only on electoral, will bring other issues. Don't forget we have outstanding issues like local government creation, which they declared in Kohed because the Senate has not incorporated it into the constitution. Governors will come up with, uh, with that. Then you have the added burden that they need to get to third of the state's houses of assembly to also approve uh, those um, amendments. And now, that is where each ethnic group, each nation, each state's interest now comes into it. That is why the way they've done this constitution, it is impossible to amend it. Right. The military deliberately did that. And that is where the Senate will get stuck. It will be open to challenges. And this Senate will leave office without the issue being resolved. You know, and that is the problem. In as much as the constitution remains what it is today, what they are trying to do will be inconsistent with that constitution. So instead of trying to set up a committee, you know, to review the electoral act, what they need to do is to set up a committee to review the constitution. Do you see view this to government to having that. that kind of will? <laughs> four years is already going. We're that, into that, the that, four that's years already. Why we said have it's like those who drafted the constitution made it deliberately to be so. Yeah, Don't but the forget. Constitution is made for the people, hmm. and it is not something that is black and white. There has to come a time, it evolves with the people as they evolve. So isn't it time? There's so many complaints about this Constitution. It has been amended several, still there are issues. So isn't it time we took on that task and amended the Constitution of Nigeria? Until we have a national question. We are all of us. We, we have plenty of national no, We are all of us who converge and say, okay, this is direction. He mentioned the ethnicity and then the interest of ethnic group, ethnic groups. It will always be there. The question before you can amend it, the process is tedious, and the the, the, the major the major stumbling block is that it must receive the blessing of at least two thirds of the House of Assembly of the 36 states plus Abuja. So that means before you can make the condition, and if you look at the way Nigeria is configured, each ethnic group, each states, tribal, they have their interest to protect. That is why it's very, very hard, or if not almost impossible, to amend the constitution. If they want to go that way, they cannot only amend the Electoral Act. They have to go and amend the constitution that talks about freedom of association. They have to go to the session that talks about what you need to form a political party to where uh, you have state uh, offices, something, you have a logo, you have a name that nobody has ever used before. The conditions are there. It's a constitutional matter, not electoral act matter. So that means they have to go to the constitution and amend the constitution. And I think there's the need for them to tread softly on this issue. Because by the time we get to amend the constitution, they must take submission from Nigerians. They may be faced with a strong energy with Nigeria who be calling for a unicameral legislation. They're going to pull the rug from their feet. Okay. <laughs> if we think it's only about our constitution, <laughs> we are wrong. Because what they need to amend that right to, uh, freedom, uh, right to uh, freedom of association, mm -hmm. it's not only guaranteed by constitution, it's guaranteed by international treaties which Nigeria signed. For instance, African Charter, uh, 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 charter uh, People's Charter on People's Rights, African Charter on People's Rights, one, then the United Nations Charter itself. So are you going to say, look, we are only now going to derogate part of those charters which you have freely entered into, international treaty? Is that what you're going to do? How are you going to restrict the freedom of association or eliminate it without facing massive problem with civil society, even in your home country. So it's a major problem. Like people said, it is almost impossible to do it. It will be open to legal challenges and I'm sure they will fail in court. Well aside from all the you know the bureaucracy that goes with this, you are in support of a downward review of the number of political From the parties. cost of governance, when you look at the cost of administering Nigeria, for instance, I'm one of those who subscribe to unicameral legislature. We do not need the Senate to start with. The House of Representatives... Yeah, you want to be like, is it for me now, or which of the governors no, is talking about this? It's a position yeah. which yeah. has been advocated yeah. years, including the last National Constitutional Conference under Jonathan yes, Sedi. So, it's what we all know. We are simply wasting public resources. That is what we are doing. Rather than using those resources for developmental needs of our people, we are using it, you know. The Senate is like a Congo, job for the boys. Yes. That's what it is. You move from governorship, you don't go to House of Reps from governorship, you go to Senate. It's job for the boys. So what you see is that 
Don't forget, the Rosai's report is also there, mm -hmm. which he advocated over 220 public agencies to be matched. Mm -hmm. It's also a job for the boys. So there are so many of that. When you open the issue of amending the constitution, <laughs> all these issues, we'll including restructuring, we'll will come into it. At the end of the day, you guys will feel frustrated. Just you know, all, all the questions I outlined for this conversation just turned on its head. <laughs> so what do we do? There is a situation. The electorate, let's not forget, they are the ones that need to plow through that long list of uh, parties and candidates to pick. Some don't even know what their logo look like. INEC is overwhelmed. We have all the issues. Yes, you talked about you know the general uh, governance issue but that is still a long way off what can we do to address the issue of our election so it will be a bit more compact and better organized and more people will be willing to participate let me let me let me it, ask it, it, it's still present to the same we are talking about we are talking about a country of about 200 million people so to speak and we have <laughs> ethnic nationalities drive and stuff like that. There's no way the very few number of political parties will take care of all this interest, especially when you consider that our major principal, our principal political actors, uh, the old order, they still see politics as job for the boys, I am there, somebody like me, my friend must be there. If we have a situation where we have serious people going into politics, that is why the, that is why they are doing all these things. They are just throwing the, 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 like a booby trap for those who will come genuinely to redress the situation so that we don't allow a strong where genuine politicians or genuine Nigerians will be thrown up to come and challenge the status quo. That's exactly why they are doing this. And they, have, they know what they are doing. They have made the political sphere so they have monetized it and so expensive. That's exactly why you are having all these small, small political parties that have refused to show their faces, because this, the terrain is not allowing them to come up. So I think what we need to do is there's a need for us to sanitize our electoral process. That, not even the electoral process, the political process. In the sense that we allow a situation where genuine people will come and they do, are not debarred by whatever means. But, you know, I, I, I always want us to be as realistic as possible <laughs> because we know that Nigeria, I mean, we're a very complex country and we can't take the whole thing all at once. Is that even possible? I don't think it is. So it how is. can we take it in small chunks, manageable chunks that it won't overwhelm us? The problem is our political parties are not organized along any ideological bent. Yeah, we could start from there. If yeah, you do that, sanity. then maybe that's uh, a way forward. Yeah, sanity because forward. as long as you don't have that, you would always have people resorting to their ethnic, religious, and some other you know, primordial sentiments. You know, considerations, uh, sentiments, would always govern the creation of political parties. And therefore, let me give you a good example. They, what they are proposing currently, if it's allowed to happen, the last, go and look at the result of the last election. The last 10 best parties were not represented by youths. The likes of Mogalu, Showore, where were they mm. on that table? Yet, the youths constitute 60% of the population of Nigeria. Are you going to chunk off, you know, um, uh, that very vital uh, majority section of the populace? We have a country where we are being governed by grandees, not by people who understand the needs of the youths. And I'm saying, if I say youths, I'm actually referring to people 35 downwards. They are 60% of the population. When you take people like me you know, into consideration, you are talking of a vast section, about 80% of the population, actually alienated from the electoral process. And those who are the beneficiaries are now trying to redefine that process to exclude those people being represented, or I bet not yet popular uh, political parties, but they are starting from somewhere. They have monetized the electoral process. So what they need to do is first demonetize the electoral process, emphasize on ideology, and ensure that you have gender representation. You know, because if all political parties are compelled that at least 35% of your representatives should be women, should be youths, that will begin to address some of these problems. They are not interested in that. They want to retain the hold of that with the hold grandees, you know, to control the atmosphere and cut off, you know, those who they think should not be in power. 
with these moves by the um, Niger Assembly, there was a report, um, former INEC chairman Jega and Yaga, this group that monitors election, they came up and, said, and scored the eight assembly rather high with the number of bills and laws we were able to uh, pass into law. And the night assemblies here, they look like they want to take on the constitution. Do you think everything you've said, um, ways that they can approach to change the electoral process so we can have a better, more robust electoral process, do you think that this night assembly has the will to make courageous changes? Even if they have the will, but uh, the way they are starting is like playing to the gallery. Don't forget in this country we have a law that have pegged the amount of money you can spend to go into every office in this country. How many people have adhered to that? Who has, what has happened to those who violated that on a simple law? That they are now embarking on this massive and my, what my friend will call can get to a journey. Because it is going to involve a lot of things, not only just sitting down with the chambers of the red and blue, sorry, red and green chamber, and then with fiat they pass the law. It has to go to all the states. They will know that they are going to face a Herculean task in pushing this through. Why don't they go into the simple things of, okay, the things that will appeal to everybody? How do we sanitize the electoral process or the political process? Let us begin with what Biodun has said. Let us demonetize that process that will allow everybody to come into the race. Today, even if you have the best of intentions and you want to go into the political terrain, you will have some stumbling block in the areas of finance because of the booby trap that we have put there. And it, does, it's not, it doesn't need to apply to only the politicians, even we, the practitioners on this our field. How many media houses will see a small political party that has invited you to an event, and then the so-called bigger party has invited you to an event? In your editorial meeting, you will tell you, go to this instead of this. So we need to, it's going to be a holistic change of mindset, not only among the politicians, but even with the people that are on the sideline. So it's a process that we cannot leave in the hands of these people. Because if we live in the hands of people to expect them to change the system, it's like asking them to commit what we call class suicide, which they will not do. So it's like we are the one that will seize the process from them. When they come up with this kind of playing to the gallery, we shut it down immediately so that they don't continue on this journey that will take us nowhere. Let us know that we are serious about it. 2019 has gone, has come and gone. Nigeria should begin to think about 2023. It will be very dangerous to live it in the hands of these guys because they will never allow people outside to come into that. They have created the way a barrier. They won't allow, they will be looking at every means to make sure that nobody cross into that terrain. We are the one that will not allow it. Anytime they come up with this kind of a thing, let us shut it down immediately. Let them pursue the real thing that is sanitizing the process, that anybody can come in and play. No, there's going to be any inhibition. Okay, well, we have very little time left. I, I want to pick on one particular um, issue that the uh, Senate um, leaders that went to visit um, INEC talked about, and that is the fact that the number of political parties going for the Kogisi and Bias State uh, governorship election um, is still relatively high. For Kogi State, you have like 23, and then for Bialsa, as small as Bialsa is, you have over 40 parties fielding candidates in the governorship election. So, wouldn't this be a good opportunity to see? What we can do, INEC can experiment with these little elections before we get to the big one. Yeah, INEC has little options in this. It's between the INEC is between the devil and the blue sea. Now, the law, the court have said those parties have a right to exist, and they also have a right to contest election. INEC has to administer that process. The National Assembly, on its part, particularly the Senate, desires a change. In the number of political parties. How will this be done? This cannot be done. There is little or nothing for INEC to learn from. What INEC needs to do is to analyze the cost of both elections, both by Elsa and, and Kogi. Kogi, do a comparative analysis, present it to Nigeria on the ang from the angle of the cost of governance, cost of administering elections. That will appeal to many people to say, hang on a minute, we need to look at the cost of doing an election. Is it the number of political parties, or is it the monetization of the electoral process, or what? Because there are two different issues. Do we need to have an ideological orientation, or what? Those are issues which we have to look at. The aspect they are looking at, 
the, the number of political parties is just, just one aspect. If you have five political parties and they are heavily monetized, still it will exclude so many stakeholders you know, from that, that very process. So what I next should be concerned about is how to have an inclusive electoral process in the country. And I think they can come from that angle by doing comparative analysis based on cost of government. So people can of make their choices. Thank you very yes. much, gentlemen, for sharing your thoughts yes, on this segment. We're still with us. <laughs> we'll go on a short break. And when we come back, we will be speaking on police and its plans of recruiting about 10,000 constables every year. Stay with us.